Hello everybody. Sorry I'm starting a little late. We're in the middle of making Christmas cookies. Um, we're decorating cookies tomorrow. But I hope you ladies are doing well. I hope everything's going good for the holidays. And um, for those that are having hard times and trials and struggles and losses and dealing with grief, you know, I just lift you up in prayer uh, during this time. Um, Lord, we just give it all to you. I know how it feels uh, very much so and I just I just pray Lord for just spiritual mental and physical healing for all of those that are listening Lord and Lord I just ask that you move me out of the way and that will you bring your message Lord your words and I open I pray for those with ears to hear to listen and get deep into your word thank you Lord thank you for everything in Jesus name I pray amen hey there it's a little um, not the usual setup um, I got a little behind so I apologize but I'm here uh, my knees doing good uh, of course I still can't go without a walker um, still a little bit of pain getting uh, feeling back in my knee uh, but it is it's it's going it's progressing um, so they said I'm doing well and progressing like you know I should and uh, just keep that in prayer, please. Um, as of right now, I'm going to go over... It's called Being a Person of Vision. Okay? And um, this one's kind of long. Uh, but I'm going to get through it. It says, Weekly Overview. This is um, an article from Crosswalk, a devotional. It says, We serve a God of boundaries. In His luminous capacity, endless creativity and boundless existence he still chose to create boundaries he still had vision for what was good right pleasing and perfect and as children made in his image we are to live think and create as he does in a world marked by busyness from seemingly infinite opportunities it's important now more than ever for us to create boundaries May you find freedom and joy this week as you receive vision and set boundaries under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The scripture that we're reading from is where there is no prophet vision, the people cast off resistance, restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Proverbs 29, 18. All right, and the devo devotional part of it. It says, the world we live in constantly bombards us with attempts to define who we are and what we should do. Advertisements tell us that what we need. Our jobs tell us how we should spend our time and find a sense of self-worth. Our families and friends often define us by what we've done or said in the past. And even our churches, sadly, define us according to how we can best meet the needs of the church rather than getting to know who we truly are. And, you know, I'm going to take a break here. Since COVID, you know, I've talked about it many times, socializing has been very hard to get back into that socializing with others and uh, fellowshipping and um, just coming together as a family and friends. And it's hard to even meet new people to find out who we truly are, to share each with each other. And, you know, so we are so busy in this life, especially around the holiday time. Sometimes we just got to sit back and rest in God's presence. Okay, it says, but we serve a God who knows us even better than we know ourselves. Psalms 139, 1 through 4 says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You known me, you known when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. And then later in verse 16, David writes, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me and 
when as yet there was none of them. This is from the foundation of the earth. God knew he would make us. On the day we took our first breath, he already had perfect, pleasing plans for us. He's known our every thought and looked upon every action with grace. He could not be more known than we are by our Heavenly Father. We cannot be more known than we are by our Heavenly Father. And there couldn't be a better guide through the chaos of this life than the Holy Spirit. It says to be a person with healthy, life-giving boundaries starts with being a person of vision. And the only place to get true vision is from the only one who truly knows you. God longs to be the north on your compass. He longs to give you honest insight into how he's made you. He longs to give you a sense of how he sees you and feels about you. And in receiving a revelation of who you are, you will be better equipped to follow his leadership into his perfect and pleasing will. Begin this week of vision and boundaries by meeting with your Heavenly Father in prayer. And may you be overwhelmed by fresh revelation of how loved you are just as you are. Okay, and in this it has a guided prayer. The first part, it says, meditate on the simple truth that God truly knows you. Allow scripture to lead you to a place of faith and trust in God's knowledge of you. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path in my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. And again, that's Psalms 139. 1 through 4. Also, again, down in Psalms 139.16, David said, Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. And that was scripture to help you to meditate on the simple truth that God truly knows you. Number two. Ask God to give you a revelation of how he sees you. Ask him for a revelation of his nearness and love. Begin to talk to him about any insecurities you have. Scripture Matthew 10, 29 through 31 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall, fail to the, fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Number three. Ask God for a revelation of what he has called you to. Ask him about your role in your family and his calling on your life as a sp spouse, child, or a parent. Ask him for vision of your work. Ask him for a vision of your relationship with him. And journal these responses. Pray upon these. You know, focus on what God wants for you. And, you know, just have a daily talk with him. You know, he's just like your best friend sitting next to you. He is your best friend. You know, he's your father. You know, have that relationship. You don't have to set a certain time to pray to him. You can pray to him daily at all times. And, and I am so thankful. Okay, in Romans eleven twenty nine, it says, For the gifts and the calling of God are, are irrevocable. To this end, we, I'm oh, sorry, 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12 says, To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good in every work of faith by his power so that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, often in my life, I feel like a horse with blinders just putting my head down and running as fast as I can 
to only end up right back where I started. And that's me to the T. God doesn't desire to put blinders on us. He doesn't treat us just as tools to accomplish tasks. He's about relationships with us. He's about guiding us and having vision for our lives. He longs to help us see ourselves in this world and opportunities before us as he does that we might gain wisdom and insight. Choose to be a person of vision. Choose to pick your head up and put on the lenses of the Holy Spirit. Ask God questions. Inquire of Him about your life and opportunities. And in response, He will provide the leadership you need exactly how you need it. Okay, ladies, give me just a minute to get to this other one. Okay, this is the daily prayer of Crosswalk. This is a prayer for the overwhelmed mom at Christmas. And I thought this would be a good one because it is that time of the year. Okay. Uh, this is by Alicia Surreal. It says, a prayer for the overwhelmed mom this Christmas. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That's Exodus thirty-three fourteen. 14. Christmas time is a beautiful and holy time of year, causing us to pause and reflect on God's rich love for us. Soaking in all its wonders, but for the overwhelmed mom, going into the season can cause a surge of panic as his excitement and anticipation grow. So do the anxiety, frantic nerves, and seasonal stress. The daunting task of trying to please everyone around her while making memories for her precious family has officially begun. And she's already tired. <sighs> On top of having surgery for me. Says her intentions may mean well and generally stem from a pure heart. But in due time, all this striving and giving, timelessly aiming to satisfy family and friends, eventually leads to a place that exudes a dim glow that's a little lackluster. And y'all have to excuse me for moving so much with the phone because I am holding it tonight. <laughs> it says, Moms have always been rather good at stuffing down their own happiness in order to bring out the best in others. This need to create magical memories only intensifies as Christmas draws near. They pledge to themselves pretty much every year that this Christmas will be different. This Christmas will be more about fill in the blank. This trail of thought is brought on by the detour that she took looking back on Christmas's past. Yet, as time goes on and the to-do to list grows longer, the once dimmed holy and jolly mom slowly gets replaced with a pale green starkness of the Grinch. Joy and peace manage to become soon by the shuffle of events and endless demands, and excitement that quickly fizzles out with unmet expectations. Before too long, the busy patterns of this season will have a weary mom's heart gently whispering, Where are you, Christmas? Maybe you, you are the overwhelmed mom in need of hope. Well, let me remind you that our Savior is near. If we truly want this Christmas to be different, different, we must make room in our schedule to become overwhelmed by His presence. Exodus thirty-three fourteen. It says, This Christmas, search for ways to slip away, to be removed from all the stuff, so you can be refueled by God's unfailing love. Carve out time to dig into his word, stroll in his beautiful creation, sit beneath the tree and soak in its glorious glow. Let the small and precious moments that you met with Jesus prompt you to rejoice, to rejoice and give him thanks and praise for all that he has done in your life. Isaiah 12, 4 through 5. It says, I would like to invite you to pause and pray with me today. Let's seek Jesus, 
this season and let him speak softly to your weary heart. When you stop searching for the perfect Christmas, we are met with the perfect Savior. Rest in him today and let his presence be the promising present of joy for your overwhelmed soul. Romans fifteen thirteen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the true reason for this season, and I am blessed by the gift of salvation you brought to this fallen world in order to save us, to save me. This time of year, I long to create special memories for my family, but it is so easy to get overwhelmed by the pressure and demands of this season. O oh God, create in me a heart that wants to be overwhelmed by your precious presence and etch that within the hearts of my children. Create boundaries in my life that allow me to be filled by your love so I can freely share your abundant love with others. Lord, forgive me where I fail you. The moments I have allowed joy to be stolen from me this season due to the calendar, I so quickly fill up with unnecessary events. Show me areas in which I can simplify my schedule and make extra room to be still and quiet. Psalms 46.10 When those events do come and we try to bond as a family, I invite you to be the main part of our gathering. Lean in a little closer when I am met with an unrealistic or um expectations. Speak to my heart and lead and guide me back to who you are. Jesus, I am so thankful for your sweet and precious birth story. I long to be overwhelmed in your presence this season and all year long. With love and adoration, in Jesus' name, amen. It's so easy to get caught up in all the festivities and all the rush and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, sometimes we just got to slow down. Give it to God. Remember what Christmas is really about. Enjoy your family time. Um, and I'm talking to myself. Um, with this knee surgery, it has enabled me to do what exactly what I want when I want sometimes. And to help out with the family stuff. And I want this done and that done. I mean, so bad that I even had a little cry today. You know, little pity me <laughs> party that I gave myself. So it's so easy to get caught up on how you want it to be special. But just remember it's already special. Because you're special to God. You know, we have our Savior. We have plenty to be thankful for. And just knowing that He loves us unconditionally. And just knowing that we can just show unconditional love to our children. By just being there and sharing time with them. Nothing to do with the gifts or the pretty things of Christmas. I mean, it's fun. You, and I'm, you know, I still do things. It's, that's not, I'm not saying not do them. I'm just saying not get so caught up that you miss out on that special time that you can have with your family and loving the Lord. Thank you all for being with me. I apologize for being late. My schedule is a little messed up with everything going on. Uh, but I will continue to do my, my Saturdays. Uh, keep me in prayer. And I keep you on prayer. I just pray for blessings this holiday season. Merry Christmas. And I'll see y'all next week. God bless. Bye.